Well, good afternoon, Eucharist Church. Thanks for joining, wherever you're watching. This week, we are in an interesting time between last week's 10-year anniversary, where we cycled across the city, and next week, when we're going to begin the process of regathering. Uh, and we thought we'd take this week as a bit of a catch your breath after the bike ride uh, before we enter into this new rhythm, catch your breath after the summer before we enter into the fall. So Jill in a little bit is gonna lead us through a spiritual exercise about recentering ourselves, anchoring ourselves, catching our breath as we head in. And then next week we are gonna begin gathering. If you don't know the regathering details yet, go to eucharistchurch.ca. And there's a video there explaining what the regathering is going to look like, as well as a survey you can fill out if you want to make sure that you can attend one of the evenings that we're going to be gathering on. We're going to be meeting during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which means our first gatherings will be uh, September 27, 28, 29, 8 to 9 p.m. here in the building, socially distanced with masks, hand sanitizer, the whole nine yards. We're taking this very seriously, especially in light of Ontario's recent cases going up. As you might have heard, Doug Ford has said that uh, social gatherings are now shrunk down, but that does not apply to many uh, nonprofits and organizations, including churches. So what that does mean for us is that we are uh, taking the most conservative estimate possible in this space to make sure that we can follow uh, all those rules as outlined and also that we keep each other and our neighbors safe. So this is just so you see, like this is the space right now. And you can see that we got, we got lots of space. The space misses you. Um, currently, we've just taped them out and make it look prettier later. You can see this tape there and there. So essentially, our seating is going to be like two in the front row, skip a row, one in this row, skip a row, two in that row. Same with here. You know, one person, Keener, can sit there in the front row, and then two rows back, one, and then two rows back, one. So yeah, as you can see, we are doing all that we can to make sure this is safe, uh, and we will need you then to register in advance to come. We've got about 27 seats here, some of which could be shared by two people in a bubble, uh, but we're looking at just over 30 on those evenings at most. We could have gone much higher than that legally, but we are taking the most conservative route we can to make sure we do this well. So if you have filled out the survey, great job, and you're going to get an email from Jill uh, in the next couple of days asking you to confirm the night you said you were going to attend because we have to lock down all these seats in advance and get those on paper so that we don't have too many people here. If you would like to attend an in-person service but you have not yet filled out the survey, go to eucharistchurch.ca, you see a trend, and uh, watch the video and then fill out that survey and tell us which night you would like to be on. We are looking for some people that can go on Thursday night from uh, and, and Wednesday night is very full, so we're looking for 10 people that could shift over. Jill will send that in the email, but if you're a Wednesday nighter that could do Thursday, that would be great to give us uh, about 30 people uh, each night that would be attending, which would be a great start. Uh, if you do not fill out the survey in advance, we will put an option to register online the week leading up to those services, but they will get filled potentially quickly, and so if you want to make sure that you can be a part of this as we regather, check that out. If you are not feeling safe to regather, or if even the, uh, the rise in numbers in Ontario has you feeling uncomfortable, we totally understand, and there will be an option every night to zoom in to the service, and uh, I even want to get like an iPad with like a wig on so that you can kind of be, <laughs> the, the Zoom people can be a person in the community that we can say hi to and, and kind of address. So we're looking at all that, we're going to make sure there's safe options, we're going to make sure there's some kid options moving into October uh, so that they can have their own space in this church. And we're going to make sure that our weekly gatherings are uh, safe, but also I think going to be really powerful and, and amazing to be together again in a space doing something totally different, which I'm quite excited about. That's it for the official updates. I'm going to throw it over to Jill now, who's going to lead us through an exercise. And then at the end, uh, I'll close this out with a benediction. Take it away, Jill. Hello, Eucharist. I miss you. I am, if you can see behind me, still in New Brunswick, um, which is not where I expected to be this September. Um, and I suspect that there are a bunch of you who are also, in one way or another, not where you expected to be in September of 2020. Um, and I think that as we move out of summer and we move into fall, there's this sense of uh, transition. I think there's a sense of worry. Um, I think that uh, 
you know, for a while we felt like COVID was something that we had to get through and that we would get to the other side and things would return to normal. And if even if at some level you knew this might be a long-term proposition, um, I, I, I certainly don't feel like I have sort of settled into this is my new normal. And, uh, and I think as fall comes, we struggle with how are we now going to anticipate or deal with a new normal? And what does a new normal look like? Look like, And um, do I even want a new normal? Um, for those of you who have been around Eucharist for a while, we're now at the end of what, we, what the uh, church calls ordinary season and we would be entering into a fall season. Today in uh, years past, would have been what we call same page Sunday, which is an opportunity for us to all get on the same page to uh, figure out sort of what our roles are and what our volunteer needs are and who's on first in a whole bunch of ways. And it's always a really nice opportunity to kind of come together and um, start the new season. So it's weird that, uh, that this is same page Sunday and it doesn't feel exactly the same. And it's, and it's weird that it's this, we are now six months into this and we don't know what the end of this is gonna look like. And for most of us, we're not really any more comfortable now than we were uh, six months ago. And I can tell you that I don't like being videotaped any more than I did six months ago, but here we are. And, and so while I was thinking about what do we do with that? What do we do with this idea of our new normal? What do we do with um, how do we live in this time? I was thinking about um, the story of the Jews in the Old Testament. And if, you, if you've been around the Bible uh, for a while, you know that most of the first part of the Bible, the Old Testament talks about this um, group of people called Israel who... Um, became the who are the Jewish nation, nation who were um, chosen by God to be his special people. And he made all kinds of promises to them to um, make them a great nation and that they would populate the earth and that um, a Messiah would come from them. And there were all kinds of promises that God made to them. And then he did like great things. He uh, They were in Egypt and they were slaves and he took them out of Egypt and um, he promised them that he, he, they would... Uh, have a land that they were promised that they would be able to end up in and it took them a while to get to the promised land but ultimately they did and they defeated their enemies and they lived for a long time um, in a very um, blessed and safe place uh, with God. But then this thing happens in the latter part of the Old Testament in in what was probably about 600 BC, um, the Babylonians, who then have this king called Nebuchadnezzar, decide that they are going to uh, conquer Israel, and they do. And they take, they destroy the temple, and they destroy Jerusalem, which is their the center of their faith and their life and their world, and they take a bunch of the Jews into exile and they just decimate the people. And so suddenly these people are in Babylon and they're in exile and, and they don't know what to do. And, and I, I can imagine that they're really confused and troubled by like, did, did we not understand something? We thought God said that he was going to protect us and that we would always be safe and it would always be good and that one of the, the writers that I was reading said um, that this must have created a real crisis for them. A crisis, a form of cognitive dissonance, which is when your view of reality and reality itself don't really match up. But he says that can precipitate the most profound despair or the most profound reworking of a worldview. And he said for the Jews, it did both. For example, they figure that um, the forming of the Torah, which is, is the, the Old Testament books that the Jews use as their sacred texts, 
um, happened during that time. There was a resurgence in Jewish tradition. There was this sense of people coming together and understanding that they couldn't just take for granted what they had or had believed that they needed to create a new theology, a new the theology of salvation, a new understanding of God, um, a new understanding of, of their responsibility in the world that they were living in. And so I want to read this passage from Jeremiah 29, which is just one of my all-time favorite passages and ends in one of my all-time favorite verses. Um which is Jeremiah, the prophet of Jeremiah, writing to these people who are in exile, right? So they have been torn from their homes. They're like living in a refugee camp. They don't know what's going to happen to them. They don't know how long they're going to be there. They don't know if they're going to be there forever. Um, and they're really struggling with how to understand themselves and how to understand God. And I'm going to read this to you a couple of times. Um, and the first time, I, I just want you to listen to it. I'm going to read it twice. The first time I just want you to listen to it. And then the second time I when I'm going to give us a minute to think about it. And then I'm going to read it a second time and invite you to just think about what strikes you from this, what message there may be for you in this message from God to his people. So this is Jeremiah 29 verses sort of four to 11. And this is taken from the message. This is the message from God, Israel's God, to all the exiles I've taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and make yourselves at home. Put in gardens and eat what grows in that country. Marry and have children. Encourage your children to marry and have children so that you'll thrive in that country and not waste away. Make yourselves at home there and work for the country's welfare. Pray for Babylon's well-being. If things go well for Babylon, things will go well for you. Yes, believe it or not, this is the, the message from God, Israel's God. Don't let all those so-called preachers and know-it-alls who are all over the place there take you in with their lies. Don't pay any attention to the fantasies they keep coming up with to please you. They're liars preaching lies and claiming I sent them. I never sent them. Believe me. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. I'm going to read it one more time and I invite you to just think about what it is, what thought or idea stands out for you and maybe um, ponder that as the evening goes on or the next couple of days. Um, what is God's promise to you in that? What is the hope that he gives us in a time that feels uncomfortable? Um, yeah, so just whatever sticks for you. This is the message from God, Israel's God, to all the exiles from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build homes and make yourselves at home. Put in gardens and eat what grows in that country. Marry and have children. Encourage your children to marry and have children so that you'll thrive in that country and not waste away. Make yourselves at home there and work for the country's welfare. 
Pray for the Babylonians' welfare. If things go well for them, things will go well for you. And yes, believe it or not, this is the message from God. Don't let those so-called preachers and know-it-alls who are all over the place there take you in with their lies. Don't pay any attention to the fantasies they keep coming up with to please you. They are liars preaching lies and claiming I sent them. I never sent them. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Amen. I hope to see you soon. <sighs> I don't know about you, I feel uh, much more centered in the spirit right now, <laughs> having done that. Thank you, Jill, for leading that exercise from the cottage, and we look forward to you coming back to us next week. We are going to go now with a benediction blessing. Before we do, just the last reminder to make sure that you've filled out the survey if you definitely want to be here when we regather beginning the week of the 27th, and to keep an eye on the eucharistchurch.ca website for the online options and for registration that is closer to the date. So let's go with a benediction blessing. I invite you to just take a posture of reception as we head out from here into whatever your week looks like. So, beloved of Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Depart in peace and in great joy. Amen. <laughs>